Okie dokie, in this video I'm going to take a look at the fish shell. So as a developer you spend a lot of time in the terminal so it's important to be as happy and productive as possible whilst you're in there. So this is why I am a big fan of the fish shell in particular. Uh, it comes with a lot of features out of the box. Things like auto suggestions, syntax highlighting, uh, abbreviations. There's also a call framework, uh, Oh My Fish where you can get lots of other plugins and and themes. Um, I'm going to go through configuring that um, and along with taking a look at some of the features um, with a fresh install of Ubuntu 18.04. So this is a fresh install from the Microsoft Store. Um, if you need to get Windows Subsystem Linux up and running in your machine, I will link uh, a, a guide in the description from Nicky Millman. Uh, it's a great guide from him. I'll also add some additional stuff from me and my experiences with it as well. Okay, so fresh install of Ubuntu 18.04. Um, it's going to uh, quickly add in uh, my user and my super secret password. <clears throat> Excuse me, clearing my throat. And that is it for this. I'm going to close this here. And then I'm going to pop open the uh, the Windows terminal because it's a much nicer interface and um, go through um, the initial install updating all dependencies um, that's not related to fish and then actually installing fish um, you notice here this is uh, my default Ubuntu 20.04 install I only use this 18.04 uh, and uh, this is it, the first time it's been used you notice that it's on my C drive I'm going to need to change that um, but first up there is the, the the update dance we need to do with uh, this cleaning store so I'm just going to be copy pasting in some commands here so update <clears throat> will update any packages which need updating uh, and, and then upgrade them and auto remove will remove any redundant packages so I'm just going to put in my password and wait for this to do its thing Okay, <clears throat> now that it's finished doing its thing, uh, we can install Fish. But um, <clears throat> for this version of Linux, I think uh, the Fish version um, isn't the latest. So if I do a sudo apt search uh, Fish and then scroll, you scroll to find it. Fish, 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 just went past it. Fish is 2.7 on uh, Ubuntu 18.04. I want the latest version and I can get that from uh, PPA, which is on the uh, Fish Shell GitHub page on how to install it. Um, if you want anything newer Ubuntu wise, I think it's just a case of um, sudo apt install fish, but I'm going to need to add this PPA here. So it's a copy paste job. Uh, enter. And then again, um, update. Um, and then I'm going to uh, install fish with a, a Y flag. <coughs> and maybe actually pay attention to, um, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm typing. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that took a super long time to install. Okay. Now I can use the fish shell, just got to enter fish in bash here, and that, that will take me to, to fish. So um, each time I start up a new shell, it's still going to be in uh, bash, but I can choose to use fish by entering fish. If you don't want to do that, then uh, you can use the ch 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 change shell uh, feature, which will ask you to put in a password, um, but I don't know the path to that, so I'm just going to say quit that and um, there is uh, I mean fish so um, I can do which which fish and that'll point to where it is um, so then do uh, ch sh uh, and you can see the syntax highlighting taking effect here where I can't type and I use the s or to save and then I'm um, going to use which fish 
or the path and uh, you'll notice I'm not putting a, uh, a dollar sign like you would with um, bash uh, because it doesn't need it in fish So now entering my password if I open up a new terminal for 18.04 straight into fish cool 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 so now I've got that installed um, let's just take a quick look at the the bash rc equivalent in fish because this here this on my c drive um this isn't great for um if, if i'm going to be downloading and um, installing repositories i don't want to be running them via um, my wsl instance on my windows file system so um this is isn't great and it's a default for all wsl instances so for me um i want to change that to like the home directory which is um home.scot um so to do that in um fish there is a config file which is in config you'll see the um or i suggest start picking out the the, the uh, path for me and it's in fish uh, and this file doesn't exist so it's config.fish and then in here I want to cd to the home directory into a repos folder and uh, why did mr c right i'm going to write this out control o enter control x in nano um, and now i should be able to source this file and uh, i get an error because i haven't created the file so i'll do mcdur and you see the um, auto suggest again and uh, this is going to be repos let's try sourcing that file again there we go so it's a repos Cool, 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 cool. Right. Um, what else do I like to use in Fish? Ah, oh, oh my Fish, um, which is a really cool little framework for nice um, themes, but also plugins. I'm going to use the NVM plugin for this. Um, but let's just get this installed. Let's copy this. Copy pasta. And then this will open up. Um, well, we'll get Oh my Fish installed. But for some reason, I'm not sure if it's just my terminal. Or if it's WSL, but once this um, installs, um, it all looks a bit squiffy. <laughs> there we go. This uh, the prompts over here for some reason. Um, we just source the. There we go. Just source the um, the the config file again. Okay, so with OMI Fish OMF, um, I can see what themes are available, and that doesn't look good. So this is the thing I said about it going a bit weird. So OMF theme, got that again, there we go. Oh, is that one? Right, so uh, I really like Spacefish. I'm gonna install that, and I'm also gonna install uh, NVM. So uh, OMF install, and Spacefish, and uh, NVM. It doesn't actually install, install NVM, the node version manager, but it um, helps link in with the, the config from fish to that because um, it needs to write out <clears throat> some path variables and uh, I believe NVM does that for you. Anyway, moving on. Right, so got uh, <clears throat> one nice theme installed now. You see it's changed from this prompt down to this. And this doesn't really give you a great deal at the moment because um, there's not a lot to show you. So um, if I had node version, it showed node version. Uh, what branch I'm on in the repository, but because I don't have any repos cloned just yet, um, it's not going to show that. So um, what I could do quickly is um, look at the Explorer, Explorer, Explorer.exe. Uh, so I think this is a new WSL2 feature where it will open up a Windows File Explorer for you on the, um, the Linux file system. So in here, I've got some, uh, where are they? Uh, an SSH folder and a git config file I like to use. I'll just pass these around between WSL instances uh, to save me setting up SSH keys each time. I'm just going to paste these in here. Okay, I'm going to, need to set the permissions on those with. Um, right, so just go back to the home folder here. And um, right, so. When doing this, you will notice that the SSH folder, oh, it's, it's under Scott. Okay, so there are occasions when it will it will bring it in as root. You have to change permissions on it. So because that's done it like that, all I need to do is change permissions on 
um, my RSA file. So um, <clears throat> it needs to be 600 and it needs to be in the .ssh file and it's uh, IDRSA. Cool, um, put in my password. And then what else do I need? Uh, I need to change the actual folder to 700. And then I can SSH onto GitHub now. Uh, git at github.com. E, right, okay, so I can now clone a repository. Um, my favorite MDX in bed. Um, my buddy Paul Scanion. Right, so I want to change to repos. And then just uh, git clone this in here. So while that is doing that, um, to actually run this, I'm going to need Node, um, and I don't have Node installed yet. So I'm going to install and run and manage Node with Node Version Manager. So do that with uh, fish, and my fish, NVM. So this um, it has to be with Bash, not fish, uh, which I found uh, from doing this before. So if I just install NVM, then the uh, NVM Omar Fish plugin I added um, will allow for uh, this stuff, which um, needs to be added to your Bash RC file, your ZSHRC, if you use those shells. Um, but I think I can just say NVM, and it will give me the information for that. So I want to say NVM install 14, node 14, and then it will set that as the default. Cool. Um, so one last thing is I know that this repo here uses uh, yarn, so MDX embed. Um, can I just list out the files? Yes, it uses yarn. So I'm going to need to install yarn as well. So I'm going to do that with uh, the official guidance here. Uh, it's just a case of copy pasta again. I'll link this in the description. That warning there is just to, to say that don't, don't copy paste random things into the shell from the internet, which is exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, how do I hit my, here it is. Paste this. Right, and this means that I can now say uh, this. Copy paste. Um, yes, I didn't hit the add the Y flag there. Let's confirm that. Cool, so I should be able to say yarn dash v now. 1.22. Super duper. Right, so now I should be able to yarn MDX embed. And you'll notice here now that um well it doesn't actually say the the node version, which it should. Um maybe it's once it's uh, refreshed. I don't think I actually sourced this um prior to running yarn. And um, we'll just check in another um, terminal quickly. But uh, you notice that we've got a nice glyph here um, and it tells you what branch you're on. Go out to this and then you should open up repos, MDX embed. It should tell you, yeah, so it tells you what node version you're on as well. Cool, 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 cool. Right, so that is going to take a while to install. Um, so this is a good opportunity to talk about things like aliases. Right, so um, I I like to alias things. So like git, uh, see gur, I can't even type out git. Um, I could alias that to just g. And you can do that in fish with um, alias. And it's say git and then equals git. And then um, so now g is, is git this is the uh, help output for git um but if i open up another terminal and go 18.04 again and then try g here it, it doesn't find it because um, i need to save it so if i do func save uh then g it's going to save that alias so now i should be able to come into here and say g and it's opened up git for us which is nice but I have been burnt in the past when doing things like SSHing onto a server 
and uh, try to do git commands and then totally forgetting how to do things. So um, what I found is something called abbreviations. Well, I haven't found, I, I knew they were a thing, um, which are abbreviations. Abbreviations. Yep. So manage fish abbreviations. So this is where you can add in um, an alias, but then if you hit the space bar, it'll expand it out. So let's just go through an example of that. So what I do um, quite often is um, things like uh, yarn install, not yarn install, yarn global. Yarn Global Ad or Yarn Ad. So things like that. Um, and, and a lot of sort of Git commands as well. Um, I could make this into an abbreviation, which would be um, ABBR and then um, I think it's the A flag you need to do. So ABBR dash A for all. And then say Yarn Global Ad. And then in... Um, some uh, what are these called apostrophes non global add and then save that as an abbreviation so then if I go into another shell now uh, not 20.04 18.04 say uh, yarn global add and then hit space it'll expand it out and then I can add in whatever but that is quite handy for when you have um, you know long abbreviations but you, you sort of need to have an eye on what they are <clears throat> that's pretty cool um and what else is there tab completion so mdx embed so if i hit tab it's going to complete that for us um if i hit tab again it's going to give us all the accessible things uh folders inside of that as well cypress docs examples and then again tab again it gives you your directories so that is pretty cool. Um, error Cypress engine node incompatible with this module. Okay, so I'm guessing that there is um, a MVM RC file in here, which is meaning, oh no, because I haven't sourced, I was sourcing something here. Uh, so, so you, I did that. Um, and go back to MDX embed again. Um, and it's still not showing the, the node version. Right, let's just close that. If in doubt. Um, and then MDX embed. Yeah. We've got it on here. I don't know. Let's try yarn develop. Um, LDX, F127. Right. Did it install? This takes an age to install. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go yarn uh, create and we're going to do react app. And it's going to be new, new react app. And then this is the same as um, MPX. So um, MPX create react app. Same, same, same thing as that, I think. So um, I'm not sure how it works entirely, but um, if there is like an MPX to do um, create React app, you can just use Yarn Create and it will do the same thing. Um, okay, so now I should be able to change to whatever it was called. News React app. Yes, okay. Uh, and then you see the uh, auto suggest picking it up again. And now I can say Yarn Start. And it should just spin up a new React app for us. Starting development server. Boom, there you go. So that is my sort of getting started guide with this shell um, and sort of a, a, a very much of a, a setting up for just everything you need to use in sort of day-to-day -day web development. So that's it for this one. I uh, hope you found it useful and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.